we really wanted to get this deck done back here before winter hit and we thought we ran out of time but then Riley looked at me the other day and he said I think we can still build it. We have no snow in the forecast for the next week or so and we're going to try to take the opportunity to get this project done. A deck's a pretty big deal for us. Right now our primary entrance into our home is through our bedroom, which was always supposed to be a short-term plan. By doing the deck out here, we're gonna have our primary access come in and out of the living room. We're probably crazy. This is probably a horrible idea, but don't worry, we're gonna take you guys along for the ride. Okay, walk us through the plan. All right, so we're gonna build a deck that's approximately 16 feet by 28 feet, and we have eight posts to set to support it. It's really important that we get these posts set before the ground freezes, so this is sort of our last opportunity to do this before the springtime. Step one is to get rid of the stump that's in the way. That's a big hole in the ground. Are you guys surprised that we are in a Home Depot parking lot next to the metal supply store trying to build a rack so that we can fit all of the things on our trailer? This stuff took up way more space on the trailer than I expected and we're a long ways from home and we don't want to have to make a second trip. So we're going to make it happen. I think we have a plan to fit everything but it's going to involve building a rack to get the camper shell up higher. Oh and also the store closes in 45 minutes. Yeah. I'm gonna pick the back up and you're gonna slide this in. Oh, higher. Okay, that side's in. Okay, that side's in. First mission is complete. Now we're headed to the metal supply store and I think we're gonna get there before they close. Elevated rack going on back here and Riley moved all the permacolms back here so the metal should be able to go right there. All right, one on the trailer. I think this is gonna work. Do you ever have one of those days where you just try to fit way too many things into one day? Yeah, well, that was today. But that was our last errand. We're gonna get some dinner and call it a night. I think we're gonna try to take advantage of this good weather and get the footings done. Pouring the footings is the thing that really the cold is making us a little concerned with. So if we can get these footings poured before the ground actually freezes, we're gonna be in really good shape. I think I got all the dirt work done to make room for this deck, so it's time to do the layout. I designed this whole deck in the computer and I just hope that what I have in my head and what I have in the computer is what happens in reality, because it's gonna be pretty cool. All right, you guys, let's do this. It probably looks warm on the camera, but it is freezing today. I think the high is 29. And so I had to bust out the overalls. I don't hit any rocks. Don't pull on it too hard. I think this is called a batter board. It's what we're gonna use to set up our entire rest of our thing. And I wanna make sure the string is straight off the building. So we're gonna anchor the string all the way over there on the building. And then coming straight and tying it off. If you guys wanna see something really cute, look up there, the sleeping boondog. 
and his face pushed against the glass. The deck's gonna be awesome for a lot of reasons. It's gonna get us our primary access point, so it's gonna give me a covered carport to park in, and there's gonna be a covered staircase that takes us up to the sliding glass door. It's also gonna give another dogs another spot to hang out in the sun. They're gonna have their own spot on the deck as well, so I'm really looking forward to this. Now we'll measure across the front of the building, and we'll go over to where we want it over there, so we can set another string over there at the right width. Oh no, your paper's blowing away. Hello. That's the only record we have of the dimensions of the building. <laughs> all right, we have our two outside corners marked and the next step is gonna be to double check all the dimensions and then make sure that we're square. So we put one of these on a corner here and we did the same thing back there and then we have strings pulled out and out and then over. This is gonna be a big deck. <laughs> it's gonna be an awesome deck. It's a really big deck. All right, now we're gonna double quadruple check all of our dimensions. All right, we got our corners all laid out. Quinn and I measured corner to corner to check for square and we're actually within an eighth of an inch, close enough for me. Next step is to start digging the footings. Now we want like a 16 inch by 16 inch two foot deep hole. We have a 24 inch bucket on our excavator. I have concerns over trying to dig that small of a hole with the excavator because a 24 inch bucket digs an even bigger hole than the size of the bucket. I think maybe those ones we could do by hand, but I don't know about these ones. That's working. Yeah, frozen layer. Maybe this isn't going to be that bad. <laughs> I'm already hot. This is going to be a lot of work. Need to get a little further this way. Yeah. However, <laughs> this hole is right where our utility lines run from the solar shed into the shop and I found the wire down there so we can't dig any deeper than that. So that's going to become the new benchmark for where we set the rest of the posts. It is technically too cold to be pouring concrete. So originally we were going to do sono tubes and pour the footers entirely. but. The problem is that I was reading that when you pour concrete, when it's too cold, the water, if it freezes before the concrete cures, that actually expands and it cracks your whole footer. So we decided to use perma columns. That way we're really minimizing how much concrete we're pouring. We're gonna be using a fast setting concrete and we're gonna pour each hole as we dig it and then get it buried as quickly as possible. Our frost lining right now is probably only about two inches. So the hope is that we can get all of that done and get that sealed back up before it freezes. The dirt should act like an insulating blanket and keep that concrete a nice warmer temperature. And since the perma column is a footing in itself, the concrete we're pouring is really to just kind of help distribute and spread that load out over a larger area of the soil. So it's not as critical as it would be if we were pouring an entire footer in a sauna tube. I put way too much water. That's like soup. It's not supposed to look like soup. But on the plus side, our new GrowWatt uh, Infinity 1500 is having no problem powering the cement mixer. These are permacolon post extensions. The idea here is that when you build a post frame or pole barn building, rather than having the wood pole go into the ground, you bolt this concrete pole extension onto your post, that way you have concrete in the ground, not wood. And we're gonna repurpose them here for this deck build because we discovered them when we built our building and we really like working with them. It means that we have to mix way less concrete on site to get this similar foundation system. It's also really cool if they have this integrated mounting bracket, it saves a step when you're building. I'm putting a rock in the bottom of the hole to lift the permacolum up out of the bottom of the hole a little bit and let the concrete flow around the bottom of the permacolum. And then that rebar is also to help the permacolum integrate into the concrete before. 
Another tip when pouring concrete in the cold is to mix a really dry mix so that there's less water because we want the water to evaporate as quickly as possible because that is the freezing that we don't want to happen. They are. They are heavy. It's right where it goes, right there. Oh, I'm not qualified for this part of the job. I always spill. Are you okay? No. Ah, oh, straight in my freaking eye. Oh gosh. <laughs> she doesn't even drop the column. You're a champion, Courtney. I need safety glasses. And there were safety glasses around my neck. Oh, oh gosh, okay. I think it's gonna work. Alright you guys, we got one footing place. We actually need to run to town to get some more building supplies before the store closes for the weekend. So we're going to call that good for today and we'll see you tomorrow. We'd like to thank GrowOut for sponsoring this video. GrowOut's a well-known name in the solar inverter industry and this is their introductory product into the portable power market. This is the all new Infinity 1500 portable power station. This combines the battery, inverter, solar charge controller, 12 volt charger, 12 volt output, USB output, and wireless phone charger, all in one super lightweight, portable, convenient box. One of the things that I find most impressive about this is the 2000 watt inverter output. Charging this thing is really easy. Right here on the side, we can just plug it into the wall for AC power for a fast charge. I think it's about two hours from zero to 100%. And then right here, it can actually accept up to 800 watts of solar input. 800 watts is a lot of solar. Another feature that I think is really cool about this is the app connectivity. I'm able to connect to this unit via Bluetooth through the Migro app and change things like the AC charge speeds so that we don't overload a circuit or set up self timers so that it automatically turns off when we're done with the project. Despite the lightweight, this unit actually has a really impressive battery capacity at 1500 watt hours that I expect to be able to power our job site all day long. So to get your own Infinity 1500 or learn more about other Grow Up products, head to the link in the description below. I don't even know how we got this lucky to have this amazing of weather for an entire week, but there's still no snow in the forecast. It couldn't have gone this well, even if we had planned it. So I think we have a really good chance of getting this deck done, but we have one foundation post done, <laughs> seven more to go, and then we can move on to framing the deck. We're really hoping to get these done today. That's going to be a lot of work, mostly for Riley because he's digging them by hand. He's such a champ. I think it's totally possible. And I cannot believe that this project is happening and that this is the weather we have in November. Without further ado, let's get these footings in. Back to work. Look at that, guys. Level and level. We nailed it. <laughs> Very solid. <laughs> Maybe because the ground's frozen. <laughs> Every time you see us use this thing, it either goes well or doesn't go at all. Hopefully it goes well. Here you go. I'm ready. Me too. <laughs> We're gonna see if the grow out can power the jackhammer. It wiggled it loose, so it can't be that big. It's nice. Sweet. Uh, 1100 watts. Oh, nice. So about half its capacity. Did it break or it just... Yeah, it broke it perfectly. Whoa, okay. Courtney and I bought that jackhammer when we were doing a flip house and we had to tear out a piece of the foundation. And uh, we kind of thought it was a one-time use tool, but we've used it a ton of times since then. Another rock. I don't think the skid steer auger would have worked at all. <laughs> Riley is a trooper and we've got the hold of the right depth and now it's time to set this column. Work harder, not <laughs> smarter. Yep. 
cold is here. I get cold really easy, so Riley's in a t-shirt and I'm in this. <laughs> <laughs> Gordy looks like she's bundled up for the winteristiest snowstorm. <laughs> is such a trooper we just found our rockiest hole yet <laughs> this thing has just been rock after rock couldn't do it without the jackhammer I don't, we couldn't even use an auger if we'd rented one no it wouldn't have worked i just farted by the camera <laughs> an inch deep we're there we are there nice job i am exhausted i think that riley paid his dues to the rock gods because this hole has only been dirt But we also knew that because I put this dirt here two days ago. <laughs> it's going much faster. We are losing daylight. Those three holes took longer than we thought they were going to. And so I think we're gonna call this good after this one. And that means we will only have three to do tomorrow, which is totally feasible. I don't have much to say because I'm busy digging. <laughs> I do feel like Riley has done all of the hard work today and I've kind of just been walking. What are you doing? This is the last one. Oh. Deck foundation is done. Oh my goodness. Big shout out to our Grow Watt box. We use this for everything on this foundation. We used it for the jackhammer. We used it for the concrete mixer. It mixed 32 bags of concrete. I'm super impressed and it still has 16% left. We could have run an extension cord inside, but honestly, it was really convenient just having like power right there that we could plug things directly into. And that meant that we could leave the door closed to the shop. We are covered in concrete. There is a giant mess everywhere. Stand by, we're gonna clean this up and then we'll be back to move on to the next step of building our deck. I think we might need to fire our drone pilot here soon. <laughs> Three crashes in one flight. All right, now that the foundation is done, the next step is gonna to be to set the posts and the beams that are gonna support the rest of this deck. We like to get some of these pieces pre-stained before we get it together because I think it's going to be a lot easier to stain them down on the ground than up in the air. I think Courtney may have already gotten started on that, so let's go see what she's up to. Lady with a knife. <laughs> and safety glasses, watch out. I think you can just unwrap it like a present. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> making that way harder than I'm using an oil-based sealer on these and the woman at the Benjamin Moore store recommended that I just roughly sand anything that I want to look pretty. She called it mill wax, mill, I don't remember what she called it, but basically when they, the wood gets like smushed and it makes these little raised bumps and, and those little bumps are what keep the stain from looking really even and instead it makes like that little pilly look that a lot of the things I've stained before has gotten. So I'm gonna try that. Not on everything, but definitely on the ones that are going to be exposed on the front. These are glue land beams. We're going to use these to support the joists for the deck. Here we go. You kind of look like you're up to no good, buddy. What are you doing? What are you eating? Dude, don't eat the snow. You don't need to eat that. Stop it. 
Oh, guys, I think I just found a major flaw in my plan for today. Um, we flipped this over to sand the other side, and it is covered in a super thick layer of ice. I think that all of them, where they're sandwiched, are going to be like that. And I, it's an oil-based stain, and I cannot stain on a sheet of ice. Um, I'm going to try to melt it with the torch. I don't know if this is going to work, but if it doesn't, we're going to have to move everything inside and let it dry out for a couple days, which would be a major bummer. Okay, the good news is that that's going to work, but I need more heat than I'm getting from that little handheld torch. I think a weed burner would be perfect, but we don't have one. So I think I have a backup plan. Okay, here we go. The good news is that this is working. The bad news is that it's gonna take a while, but honestly, every, building in winter, everything just takes longer and we've learned to just be okay with that. I see that you put down lots of drop cloths. That looks really nice. But that is my sweatshirt. Are you staining in my sweatshirt? Oh my goodness. That's some serious ice. Is it? <gasps> Whoop. You're gonna make it wet in the shop. I know. I didn't mean You're to get the concrete wet. I didn't mean to do that. Heater back on. Oh gosh, it's gonna it on <laughs> turn on right when you're standing there. Little by little, piece by piece, I take back what's been stolen from me. Little by little, piece by until I'm complete Working on this project this evening with Courtney has just had me thinking about just how far we've come in the last year. So exactly one year ago, we were starting this garage door project, which means that one year ago, there was no power, there were no lights inside, there was no door on the building, there was no upstairs apartment, we didn't have a concrete slab, and we didn't have any way to get here in the winter time. It's pretty crazy to think how far we've come in the last year, and I'm looking forward to seeing what the next year brings. So I wanna say a huge thank you to Courtney for all your hard work over the last year, making our dreams come true with me. No, you wouldn't take was not yours If you know who I am I win the night Last side. The last few days have been pretty brutal, especially for Riley. <laughs> it was a lot of manual labor, and honestly, it's been a while since I've done that much manual labor. I'm so glad that we pushed through and got those done before the ground froze, because there's no way we could have done that until spring. And now that the foundation part is done, really it doesn't matter what the weather does, because none of... Well, I mean, it's not going to stop our progress, it's just going to make things a little more difficult. That's it for this video. We are exhausted. We need to let these cure and we will see you guys next time to hopefully make some huge progress on this deck. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.